allow me. His Girl Friday, Cary Grant, Rosalind Russell, Howard Hawks' fast-paced directorial tour de force based off of 1931's The Front Page, which was adapted from a late 20s stage play of the same name. Cary Grant is Walter Burns, a selfish cat of an editor for the Morning Post who learns that his ex-wife and journalist equal has decided to move on with her life for something a lot more respectable. This comes as a gigantic blow to Burns in the first act, as the two dump pages worth of expository dialogue and less than 10 minutes. She's through with all of it, and is prepared to retire to the simple life with her new beau, Bruce, played by Ralph Bellamy, who she plans to marry the very next day. Rosalind Russell plays Hildy with a plum. Keeping up with Grant's perfectly timed verbal gymnastics couldn't have been an easy feat, but she manages to do it so convincingly without missing a beat. Darn what you do. Simply put, this is the kind of acting we rarely see anymore. So comfortably organic, with room for improvisation. You've done something big, Hildy. You stepped up into a new class. Huh? The pair appear to be having a ton of fun as they effortlessly fling insults at one another beneath layers of complex dialogue. It's exhausting at times, but that's the point. Walter and Hildy are cut from the same cloth. Two competitive, career-driven narcissists will go to great lengths to get their story. The power they have to manipulate and railroad others is evident from the very beginning. When it's announced that she's leaving the post, he barely bats an eye until it's revealed that a new man is in the picture. This results in the first of many sparring matches between the former lovers as Walter makes snide comments and Hildy reciprocates in kind by digging up his shortcomings as a husband. She enters the room with dignity, but it all comes crashing down when he starts to push. He doesn't treat me like an errand boy either, Walter. It's here that we first see Hildy's true colors. My takeaway is that she's only fooling herself. This fantasy life she pretends to want will ultimately leave her miserable. The house with the picket fence, children, a supportive, understanding husband. It's not her, and Walter knows it. Over the course of the film, the camera rarely leaves Hildy for very long. It's kinda her story. There's nothing wrong with Bruce. He's clearly devoted, supportive, and sane. The movie goes out of its way to portray him as the perfect man. All of this is concisely portrayed to the viewer when he, Walter, and the bride-to-be dine together. His respect for her as an independent person proven several times over during this brief exchange. The problem is that under the facade, she's as terrible as her ex. Over the course of the film, we witness as she falls into familiar habits. People can change, but it doesn't seem like she genuinely wants to. Unfortunately, Bruce's naivety and unwavering devotion make him the scapegoat in more ways than one. At the end of the day, this is a comedy, so it isn't unbearable to witness all of the terrible things our main character do to him, like that's not to say things don't get a little dark or that there isn't an underlining message. Hawks chose to highlight the, let's just say, morally corrupt individuals while the few innocent characters get trampled. There are two specific scenes that exemplify this. We have Hildy's first interaction with Earl, a timid bookkeeper convicted of murdering a police officer. In this wonderfully shot scene, we are offered some insight into her true character as she effortlessly manipulates the man into agreeing with her every word. All of this is perfectly illustrated to the audience when she lights a cigarette and hands it to him while she dominates the conversation. Finally, when she's finished on her own terms, he sheepishly admits to not being a smoker. See what you mean. Following this, there's a card scene with reporters making inappropriate comments to a woman named Molly who is involved in the case and angry with them for misrepresenting her in the paper. Her very human request to be heard is continually squashed and mocked by these carnivorous narcissist writers only interested in their latest scoop. Their undignified remarks and failure to even look her in the eye paint a perfect picture of how soulless they as a whole truly are. When Hildy eventually enters, they very pointedly label her as one of the pack. I think it's also important to note that she quite literally steps on someone's toes for the second time in the movie as she exits this scene. Both times she does so unintentionally, but the message is clear. The second act is almost entirely led by Rosalind Russell. Her acting is simply superb as we witness Hildy get the job done by any means necessary. Grant is almost completely absent during this entire midsection of the film before the pair reunite for the finale. This is where things turn into a full-blown farce as all the previously introduced characters bustle in and 
and out of a single room. The acting is truly phenomenal across the board as everything gets resolved. It's utterly chaotic and absolutely exhausting, but the way everyone delivers their dialogue without interfering with the flow is simply remarkable. Grant is often remembered for his good looks and charm, but very few seem to commend his comedic timing. Throughout his career, he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavyweights of classic cinema when it came to his physical prowess. The Pratt Falls of the great Laurel and Hardy are second to none, but this man could hold his own. Many remember his linguistical talents, but in films such as Monkey Business, he was an acrobat. His Girl Friday didn't require any overtly goofy stunts, but the way he delivers lines, contorts his face, or manages his voice is a pleasure to watch from start to finish. Russell's more subdued presence balances it all out as she nails every line with sincerity. Did you hear that? I'm not here to spoil anything, as it's free to watch on this crap form filled with inappropriately placed ad breaks, but this one scene in particular, where they're each having separate conversations on different phones, says it all. They don't make them like this anymore. Sure, it's unrelentingly loud, but there's a rhythm. Hollywood comedies these days are more interested in shouting one-liners or shocking audiences with their poop dick pussy fart jokes. This is pure class. Expertly shot, brilliantly edited comedy at its finest. A special shout out has to go to Billy Gilbert as Joe Pettibone and of course his wife, especially in this late scene with the sleazy mayor portrayed by Clarence Kolb. Now let's have your story, Mr. Pettibone. There have been multiple stage revivals of this particular Howard Hawks reinterpretation. In the front page, the Hildy role was a male character. Character. I've considered giving it a whirl as someone fond of live theater, but always chicken out because His Girl Friday is just so perfect. I really can't imagine anyone else in either role. The chemistry and charisma. This is a perfect movie that I clearly highly recommend. It's in the public domain, but I would suggest downloading a version instead of watching it on YouTube. There's a channel called Retrospective Classics on here that absolutely butcher the film with poor audio quality and selfish ad placements every few minutes. Very few things get under my skin more than this kind of shamelessness. It's widely available to download, so go the extra mile and watch it that way if you have the means. Next time on this channel, another under eight album review. So stay tuned. <laughs>